Sometimes I get asked to do videos that are a bit more... personal, I think is the word I'm looking for. Some people are perfectly comfortable sharing their lives online, and, well, I'm not one of them. This time, however, I'm making an exception to talk about something that I haven't thought about until I was listening to music and randomly had this jingle pop into my head. It's my part of town, one and only heart of town, my hometown, part of town, yeah. It's one of those songs that most every Northeast Ohioan had drilled into their brains over the years. Right between the voice of the Norton Furniture Guy, If you can't get credit in my store, you can't get credit anywhere. My name is Mark, and you can count on it. And the Liberty Ford jingle that's just a list of dealership locations. Sing along if you know the words. Liberty's in Solon, Maple Heights, Brunswick, Parma Heights, Vermilion, Hum... I don't even like Ford! Parmatown was a big-ass mall near where I grew up. I have to say was and not is because this is what happened to it about seven years ago. And there goes my childhood. Parmatown was a huge deal in the 80s and 90s, but to make a long story slightly shorter, as the bigger stores attached to it, called Anchors, started going out of business or getting bought out, the mall's fortunes turned for the worse. There was a Dillard's attached to the mall, and no, I don't blame you if you have no idea what Dillard's is, which was demolished and replaced with a Walmart, which is like getting rid of your colon cancer only to replace it with brain cancer. With the anchors now leeching sales from, instead of driving sales to, the smaller stores inside the mall, and the mall ownership trying to raise rent on some stores, they started leaving one by one. You see this rush uh, in here right now? Like, this shit is ridiculous. And ain't, no, what, and ain't nobody coming in lids. <laughs> Power wasn't even on for certain parts of the mall. The fountains I used to steal, I mean, toss pennies into were shut off and removed, and it got to the point where the mall went from having over 50 stores to five. It was so dire that the sign above the entrance included a list of every store left standing, which just made it look like a giant tombstone for whoever was left. The formerly sprawling mall became little more than an L-shaped hallway that took seconds to reach the end of until it was finally and mercifully bulldozed. Now I know what some of you are thinking. What does any of this have to do with this video game based YouTube channel? Well, I mentioned in a previous video the specific GameStop that started my Bloody Roar fandom. This mall served two purposes. One, it was where I or my parents got a decent amount of video game stuff from either KB Toys or Electronic Boutique, aka EB Games, aka that place GameStop took over. That or they went to the Toys R Us nearby, which is also gone, or the Sears nearby, which is also gone. I don't miss that last one as much considering that's where my virtual boy came from. Aside from that, this mall was also my first major exposure to arcade games, specifically from Aladdin's Castle. This was a massive chain of arcades, sort of like Chuck E. Cheese or Mark's Funtime Pizza Palace, but without the pizza parties and therefore slightly fewer screaming children. If you don't know what the latter is, it's some Chuck E. Cheese locations that the owner bought and rebranded as a bootleg knockoff named after a chain of grocery stores. They weren't that great, but to be fair, that place was where I first played Dragon's Lair, and experienced the disease-riddled toddler purgatory known as the Ball Pit. The babies look unhappy. Add more balls. Aladdin's Castle, however, was my first experience with most video games that didn't involve a console and controller. There are some things about arcade gaming that you just can't replicate with consoles. Like the joy of being 8 years old and slipping a 10 or $20 bill into the change machine, hearing and seeing the tokens flood out of it and overflow the coin tray. Or figuring out how the Light Stopper game works and causing it to run out of tickets. Twice. This place also updated its machines regularly, so it was often where I first saw several games in person. The first time I played non-zapper or super scope rail shooters like Lethal Enforcers, Revolution X, House of the Dead, and Carnival? Aladdin's Castle. My earliest exposure to beat-em-ups? The Simpsons Arcade and Metamorphic Force at Aladdin's Castle. 
earliest exposure to fighting games, including Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, and Mace the Dark Age, because the game itself was meh, but the art on the cabinet looked pretty cool? Aladdin's Castle. The first Dance Dance Revolution machine I ever played? DDR Max 2 at Aladdin's Castle. And it wasn't just when I was a kid that I went to this place. I used to go to college in the area, and if I had a decent break between classes, I'd drive over to the mall and kill time at Aladdin's Castle instead of studying like I probably should have. Sadly, even at that time, I could tell the mall was probably going under. I took the long way to walk to the side of the mall Aladdin's Castle was on, and I went from seeing 10 to 20 people on the way in and out, to maybe 4 or 5 a couple years later. When I moved out of the area, Aladdin's Castle didn't survive much longer. It moved out, and the space was taken by Parma Fun House, the Mark's Funtime Pizza Palace of mall arcades, but with whatever generic machines the mall already had. Claw games, those ceramic cars that oscillate if you put some quarters in them, and more gumball machines than there were people and staff in the whole mall. The only thing I have left from those days is a couple leftover arcade tokens. The one I went to stopped using the branded Aladdin's Castle tokens and instead swapped over to the generic Namco Arcade ones. They've just been sitting in a random box of crap for years now and... I think it's time to make peace and move on. This is, uh, well, that's the football field that was across from Parmatown Mall. And this is, uh, not Parmatown Mall. That was a JCPenney. Over here is where the entrance to the mall area was. You can see that the loading dock area is starting to gather graffiti. It looks as though most of the mall's foundation was demolished and they installed a bunch of little strips of shops. So I brought something with me. Not sure how well this is going to show up, but I found a map of the old layout of Parmatown Mall. So I also found someone who posted a directory. You can see Aladdin's Castle is listed under E. That's where E is, which means it would be directly behind where the J.C. Penny was. So, if Shoppers World is the J.C. Penny, then Block E of the mall would be going through here, and as you can see, a lot of it was just demolished and then nothing was built on top of it. It was just paved over or they're having like storage containers and geese out here. <sighs> it's, it's a little upsetting really. Well, Aladdin's Castle. I wish I had some deep meaningful thing to say right now, but I don't. Except, goodbye.